Hello and welcome to the Helios blog. My name is Helios here for another reaction video. Today, Sneeko talks about modern women. Let's get into it. The reason she's alone is because she's difficult. Women are not accepting the bare minimum. Women fuck men they respect. All the women who say things like, I'm strong, independent, I don't need no man, like, y'all impress me. Women just gaslight each other and say what they want to hear. That, that surface level stuff that can get you in the door, of course, having the blue check on Instagram or being in the right spaces. Like right here, I'm in Vegas right now and I'm going to party with the, the Nelk boys. So obviously I'm going to have access to a lot of women that uh, most guys will never just be able to be around. But in order to, to get the clothes or to go from that to, to where you really want to go, I think a lot of the time it really is about character. I, I don't think that girls are fucking for for a Birkin bag like they are. I, I think that that's something that's perpetuated in music a lot of time, but in my experience, I haven't dealt with a lot of these shallow women to that extent. Do you think you have a harder time um, making friends or like knowing who your real friends are or trusting people? Yeah, I've made that realization and I'm actually having flashbacks. The last time I was in Vegas, I was assuming that a lot of the people that I was around, like fellow content creators, stuff like that, were people that I could trust. But in this game, everybody is trying to climb. Everybody, especially people who have chronically been online for, for years and years and years, they value clout and attention more than most people will really know. So, of course, you have to be really careful about who you spend your time with and who you trust, especially in this, in this red pill space, which is actively being silenced so much and which is being attacked by so much. The media hates us. The feminist hates. They all hate us. Big tech, the government. I've been profiled by so many different types of people so at this point you have to move cautious it's not just making videos on youtube anymore it's a different ball game completely and now this message is getting involved in politics and i'm telling anybody watching this it's going to grow so much and people who are considered in this space are really threatening the powers that be and so you're going to see they're going to have to get craftier in their ways to silence us because it's getting harder to lie yeah, uh, I think Sneeko is right about that. Uh, basically, it's harder to lie to men about women's nature. And basically, that lie has been used in order to get men to sacrifice themselves for women, right? Because the point is this. These girls go and sleep with Chad, uh, destabilize society, relationships, the nuclear family, whatever. Uh, because that was America's system before, right? The nuclear family. And then they, they turned it into, after the birth control pill in 1960... Uh, they turned it into, um, you know, you have a starter marriage and then you divorce and then the, um, um, you know, the, the the guy has to pay money to the girl and you tax that, right? And then they and then everybody gets double taxed because everybody's in broken up, separated relationships, right? That's that's the the plan, right? And it it does increase the money of the country that you're in uh, by quite a bit, but what it also does is it causes severe and a very powerful cultural decay. And this cultural decay leads to destabilization and eventual self-destruction. And uh, now, basically, uh, they're just trying to tamp down on it, um, you know, on, on the, the message of, you know, don't just commit to a girl that's, you know, slept with 50 chads and so on, right? Uh, and so many girls now on TikTok just showing their true colors and guys talking about not committing to them and so on. And apparently that makes the guys the bad guy, even though 5% of men participate in hookup culture and 95% of women in 2023 do or have at some point. Um, and that is something that needs to change or else men are going to opt out of the dating market, right? And then what happens? Okay, uh, shilling time. Uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Go to my Patreon and uh, subscribe, patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Again, it's patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Drop me a donation like Hunter M, Adrian R, and Tom M. Shout out to them. Just go to more in the description box. So, you know, under the video, there's something that says more. You click on that and there's the links. And uh, you can you can uh, click the donation link there. Uh, buy my books at bit.ly slash Helios books. You can also go to the more and the, the link to, the, to my books is there as well. All right, back to the video. Why do you think you got canceled? I got canceled for telling the truth. I got Indeed. canceled for it. I don't like how people are saying you didn't actually get canceled. You just broke the terms of service. They, they wiped me off of four different social media platforms in the same week. 
Twitch, nobody can give me a valid reason for that. YouTube, I understand I got terminated for three strikes, but if you look at what the three strikes were, COVID misinformation, election misinformation, and cyberbullying. Actually, the third strike was for the it's complicated reaction video. When I went to the lee, 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 that was considered cyberbullying. So it's, it's just pretty, you can see the obvious double standards, how girls all day long will say that men are trash, will say that I'm a piece of shit, they can like wish death on me. And then that's not considered hate speech. That's not taken down. People have made documentaries saying they hate me and like all the stuff about my family. It's not hate speech. Even though saying I hate Sneeko is not hate speech. But if I go lee, 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 making fun of eyelashes, that's cyberbullying. But in the same video, the girls will say like, I don't need a man. Men ain't shit. I'll step on you. I'm a girl boss. I'm better. Men should die. Like they can have kill all men podcasts. A girl will be, literally say kill all men in a podcast. Fine. Keep it up. But the hill right 2023 in a nutshell. But what is the point of that? Right? Why is that allowed? Well, the reason that's allowed is because women are the major consumers in the United States, right? Women consume more than men. And so um, allowing women's ideology and by extension, uh, allowing women a safe space to say whatever they want while not allowing men in in turn or, uh, you know, by extension, um, makes women feel safe and because they feel safe then they're safe to consume and they consume much more than men so the point is the businesses have made their choice they've chosen money because women consume more the businesses support the women's ideology that's the point hypocrisy to say that i need to be taken down for cyberbullying for making a stupid noise about eyelashes and COVID misinformation, election misinformation, which is, I think, what the analogy of the red pill really is. It, I think it's bigger than just women and relationships. I think it's getting down to the truth that they are trying to control us. And these are all the methods. These are all the ways. And this is how you can see it. And every when you walk outside, you could see right in front of your face how, how we're being controlled. All these girls think they're tens, and they don't know why. They think that indeed, that's that's right, exactly. Um, they don't know why. But basically, what has actually happened? Disney, you know, the Disney fairy tale fantasy, um, the You Go Queen stuff, uh, and more. All of the new movies, right? All of the new movies has a new cultural message in them. So, like, they, they have, um, you know, girls being able to, to fight guys one-on-one -on -one and win. win. They have women in positions of power over men in almost every single TV show, movie uh, that, that you can possibly imagine. Uh, stuff that doesn't reflect reality, right? Um, you have, uh, you know, everywhere you go, like, um, basically, um, the powerful men, strong male archetype, you know, that used to exist and be ubiquitous, like even, let's say, 60 years ago. Uh, 70 years ago in uh, in movies and tv shows and all of that it's all but deleted men are now shown um in movies and tv shows as being weak losers right who uh need the guidance of a woman to be successful um and and th this message is nearly everywhere right so uh, women are brainwashed to believe that they're superior and they should be in charge and everyone should listen to them and their opinions are correct and everything they do is right and they can do no wrong and they're strong and independent and all of that and men are told they're weak they're trash they're pathetic they're under women they should sacrifice themselves for women they should you know um be at the beck and call of society they should sacrifice everything for everyone else and not think about themselves because you know it's a it's a n word it's a a word it's a m word to be those things that is absolutely true that they're better than men and they don't know why they they're saying they're feminists and they're oppressed and they don't know why you can see the npcs just talk to them they're walking around program with a bunch of nonsense yeah and there's more and uh, not just that um uh, institutions right universities in the modern world in 2023 most programs are just brainwashing programs they're not uh, they don't do anything good for you right all they do is waste your time and in, in indoctrinate you with stuff that destroys you right um, and this applies to both men and women so most university programs are not worth considering they're not worth taking because if you take them then uh, you're going to get destroyed more often than not uh, very, very few university programs are non-indoctrination programs in 2023. So you have to be very careful what you study, what you do. 
but I got I got canceled for exposing a lot of the truths about the world. Do you think you went too far? No, and I don't regret anything I said. And I'm in a sense I'm glad that this happened because I just needed a new challenge. It was getting to the point, and like you saw when I was really getting the growth. I, a big credit to the It's Complicated channel. I it would not have happened without this channel, without reacting to this type of content. I was able to amplify because your, your videos you're not really on camera. It's more monotone you're letting the interview speak for themselves but then me i needed to go yell at people because they're not going to go watch the video without being yelled at so i i got it for short form and it was just getting too easy at a certain point i was growing so fast you saw the growth too after that tiktok thing everything exploded everything people were talking about everywhere sneeko has a hashtag sneeko on tiktok has five billion views plus in the span of a couple months so I, I think i just needed a new challenge and no, I didn't take it too far. Obviously, it would be nice to have this major platform so that we could wake more or I could wake more people up. But I'm just going to have to work harder and smarter. How has your life changed since the cancellation? It's improved. I, people are like some people speculate that like I'm going broke and I have to get a real job. But there's some things I can't talk about tomorrow. For, for instance, I am accomplishing one of my childhood dreams and when you find out what's happening or the connections that I've made since risking it all to tell the truth have been way more valuable than a couple hundred thousand AdSense dollars. So my life has changed that I, I there's more doors, there's more connections that I'm making and, and I've actually garnered more respect from a lot of the people that I look up to because they see that I'm not in this for clout or for money or for personal gain. Like I really genuinely care about getting the truth out there. That's what they well, again, we all know that this is garbage, right? Obviously, Sneeko's in it for himself. But if he can paint himself as the hero, right, all the better, right? You get the money and you get to look like the hero. So I can, I can respect that. Of course, you have to be very intelligent when you're at this uh, level of status and popularity, what you say. Because what you say will be heard by many, many people and they'll actually listen to you as an authority, even though Sneeko's in his 20s, right? So you need to be very careful. Okay, anyway, let's continue. It really, that's my life's mission. So my, I, it's, it's changed in a lot of ways too where I have to be more calculated and I have to play chess against the world now. Not only against the haters or the feminists or the, the program people, but the government and big tech. You need to start playing more strategically so that you can last as long as possible. And I, I feel like I've gotten a lot smarter. When, if, when I started reacting to your videos back in the summer, I, I feel like I've matured and I've grown like five years in the span of six months. The stuff that I know now, the people that I'm talking to, how I'm able to articulate my message and everything, I've improved drastically more in those past six months of live streaming and of figuring out what's going on behind the scenes than I did in the past three years. How did you discover my channel? I don't remember. I remember watching it when I was just starting to live stream and I don't remember. I think I just found it on the YouTube homepage. And I remember telling uh, my friend Rhino from Love Live Serve and he, he's kind of red pilled. I remember telling him like, yo, there's this really good street interview channel. That's just gold to read. He's like, that guy from Vegas is complicated. I'm like, yes, the, his interviews are exposing people. They don't even see what's happening. They are saying all this bullshit on camera and he's just getting him with a couple questions i've never seen this before and then he's like yeah yeah that's and then just kept watching i've seen every single video on your channel i've done a reaction to every single one <laughs> all right some days i'll just look and i'll dig and look to sort by the oldest back in 2018 2019 just looking for something because it's just so much fun to watch and, and these videos by it's complicated are super good and i've actually done quite a few uh, reaction videos to this um, uh, to this channel as well um, on, on my channel um, so they're there if you're interested just just um, I, I think a bunch of them are in season four so right now we're on season five so if you go to the season four playlist lots of them are reacting to it's complicated um, I believe I've put the hashtag in the in the title um, anyway uh, maybe maybe I'll put um, a card here and you can just click at the top there for uh, it's complicated okay um, for um the the reactions that i've done to it okay let's continue and sometimes i'll admit because i've watched them so many times uh i i love watching you watch my channel because you'll 
bring it to another level. And uh, so that's, that's kind of a thrill for me, I'll admit that. Where do you hope to see yourself in five years, both professionally and personally? Personally, I think starting a family within five years, but I am 24 and when I was 19, I wanted kids by now, so who knows? By the time I get to 29, maybe I wouldn't want to have kids anymore. But ideally, maybe starting a family. And then professionally, I want to get into the political space more. I want to continue having these debates and conversations, and I want to continue talking to the people that, that I have been talking to and making connections there. Because my motto is seek truth through funny. The most effective way that I've learned is talking to funny people and realizing things that it, it's funny because it's true. That's why like, I, I love your channel is because like, when you get to be like, well, I've never thought about that before. It's like it's, it's really funny because they haven't. I always attain the idea that you can seek truth through funny. The funniest thing brings everybody's ego down. When I could laugh at girls for their eyelashes or for the fact that they're all tens, you're lowering their self-esteem. You're popping it and you're bringing – it's humbling. That's what stand-up uh, – It's not quite – so Sneaker is not articulating this point very well. Um, but I believe what he's trying to say is if you are satirical – Right. If you're talking in satire, if you're if you're making a joke, but the joke contains truth, people are more likely to listen to it. Right. Um, what Sneeko is describing is Patrice O'Neill, his his strategy. All right. Uh, let's read this uh, chapter by Rudolf Tomasi from uh, his book, The Rational Mail. It's the bitter taste of the RP. I'm going to finish this chapter with one of the most important Rational Mail essays I've written, according to my readers. I save this for last because it's the most important precaution to keep in mind when your eyes are being opened and you or the people you know are worried about your transformation into game or RP awareness. A lot gets made of the dark triad or the dark side of game where a skillful player can sadistically use his newly learned RP superpowers for evil instead of for the greater benefit of both himself and mankind. Game aware women, the ones who've been forcibly exhausted of all pretense of maintaining the illusion that game is a lie, will feel as though it's owed to them in their concession of game's reality, that men should use game for women's primary benefit. Even to the last effort, women still cling to the tools of a feminized acculturation. Yeah, okay, you got us. Game is really what women want. Hypergamy is the law of womankind. But now it's your responsibility that you use it for the better benefit of society by molding a new breed of improved, game-savvy beta males to accommodate a feminine-centric monogamy. You owe us our security for having admitted to the grand illusion that's kept you in thrall for so long. It's an indictment of game-aware women and sympathizing men that they should feel a need to delineate some aspects of game into good camps, pro-women, pre-feminized monogamy, and bad camps, manipulative, polygonous, male-centered. Even in the admission of the truth that game is enlightened men of the feminine imperative, it still seeks to categorize the application of, of game to serve its own end. That men might have some means of access to their own bedroom fund strategy is too terrible a threat. Game must be colored, good or bad, as it concerns the imperative of women and a femicentric societal norm. As a default, socially correct and virtuous concern, women have an easier time of this. As game becomes increasingly more difficult to deny or misdirect for the feminine, the natural next step is accepting it and it becomes. Uh, then you need to qualify its acceptable uses. While hypergamy is an ugly truth about women, the characterization of it becomes just how women are, an unfortunate legacy of their evolution. However, for men, the characteristics of the harsher aspects of game in its rawest form, which are contingencies for hypergamy, are dubbed the dark arts by those who have an interest in maintaining feminine primacy. Myth of the dark arts. According to the common definition, the dark triad is a group of three personality traits, narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy, all of which are interpersonally aversive. Depending upon context, that may be convenient assessment of a sociopathic personality, but it's hardly an accurate assessment of game as a whole. In its desperation to come to terms with the more widespread acceptance of game, the feminine imperative had to make some effort to dissuade the common man from embracing the means to his release from the feminine matrix. Associating game with dark triad personality traits makes this qualification process much easier since the feminine imperative owns the messaging and the de defining authority of what is social and what is antisocial. The problem then becomes one of defining what acceptable use of game is social and antisocial. Predictably, 
Game accepting women want to cast games in terms that suit them individually and accommodates for their own personal conditions as well as the priorities of their particular phase of life. However, because of such diverse conditions, consequently there's a lot of disagreement among, amongst game accepting women about what should constitute appropriate use. Thus, a pick and pull form of rationalization about aspects of game gets thrown about in their internal debates. For feminized men, this is very confusing. It's difficult enough for them to accept that women love jerks, despite being told the contrary for half their lives. But for the game-accepting women they still think are quality, it's a bitter pill to swallow that these women debate the aspects of acceptable, lovable, jerk-like qualities and the evil, user, manipulative, dark art jerk that only contextually misaligns with their present conditions and priorities. For both the plugged-in and the freshly unplugged, this is an incongruity that they've have, they have a tough time reconciling against the ideals of moralism that a femme-centric society has unwittingly convinced them of. While a broader understanding of hypergamy and game make for useful tools for enlightened single men, the game accepting beta plugin will see it strictly as a means of satisfying the feminine imperative, long-term provisional monogamy. Any deviation from this narrative, any guy using game for personal gain, personal pleasure, or to enact his own bedroom fund strategy, is guilty of crimes against society. Since the societal greater good has been defined by the feminine imperative, anything counter to it is definitively evil, counterproductive, antisocial, and manipulative. The bitter taste of the RP. The truth will set you free, but it doesn't make the truth heard any less, nor does it make the truth any prettier, and it certainly doesn't absolve you of the responsibilities that truth requires. One of the biggest obstacles guys face in unplugging is accepting the hard truths that game and a new awareness of gender relations forces upon them. Among these is bearing the burden of realizing that you've been conditioned to believe for so long were comfortable ideals and loving expectations and that these are really liabilities. Call them lies if you want, but often there comes a certain sense of hopeless nihilism that accompanies what amounts to a system that you're now cut away from. It's not that you're hopeless, it's that you lack the insight at this point to see that you can create hope in a new system, one in which you have more direct control. There are no dark arts. This is simply one last desperate effort of the feminine imperative to drag you back into the matrix. There is only game and the degree to which you accept it and are comfortable in using it in the context that you define. If you choose the context of a mutually beneficial, mutually loving, mutually respecting long-term relationship monogamy of your own choosing, know that it's the fundamentals of game that are the root of its success or failure. If that context is in terms of spinning multiple plates, liberating the affections of women from other men, and enjoying a love life based on your personal satisfaction, also understand that it lives and dies based on your understanding of the fundamentals of game. Just as alpha is not inherently noble or deplorable, game is neither inherently good nor evil. The devil is in the details, and whoever has defined context, you use it. In the introduction section of the 48 Laws of Power, author Robert Greene explains the same about power. Power is neither good nor evil, it simply is, and your capacity to use power, your comfort in using it, doesn't invalidate the principles of power. Likewise, your discomfort does not excuse you from the consequences of having that power used upon you. The unwritten 49th law of power is denying the utility of power itself, or demonizing its uses both moralistically and socially. With the wide dispersion of game theory, this has been the reactionary tact of the feminine imperative, appeal to the deeply conditioned moral, ethical, honorable, virtuous ideals and feminine-specific obligations engrammatically planted in men by a femme-centric society, while redefining the acceptable use of the same game the feminine imperative demonizes for its own purposes. And there you have it. All right. A little bit more of the video. Of comedy is in a room full of people. The truth is decided by what makes the crowd laugh the most. And I, I think that I can bring this idea to, to empower a lot of people. I don't want to become a politician, but I want to talk to people and I, I want to connect with people through comedy and through funny. And I, I see the, the power that it has and how I've learned from guys like Patrice O'Neill or Dave you Chappelle see? or those... George, Louis C.K. George, George Carlin, Carlin have made me thought and have really implemented ideas in my head like and have given me life philosophies that I would never have received without comedy. And okay, so Sneeko wants to become a, uh, you know, he wants to tell the truth but in a funny way so he doesn't get it doesn't get canceled again. Understood. All right, uh, on to relationship advice. I uh, posted 5 hours ago. Fiance, she's 25 and he's 28, confessed to me of having a crush on a coworker. I proposed to my longtime girlfriend about a year ago, and our wedding is coming up at the end of next month. She started a new job two months ago, and since then, she started this new job. There's been a noticeable change in her mood. 
She's introverted and shy when meeting new people, but will get comfortable once she gets to know them. Over the course of a month, she's meeting new people in other departments every day, trying to be as friendly as possible, and she's excited about this new job and very optimistic about how it's going. She tells me about Chris and how he's into anime as she is, and they talked about his experience working there and how funny he is. A few weeks after she meets Chris, she texts me at the end of the day to tell me she has something to tell me, and she's very sorry about it. After apologizing a few more times, she finally confesses she has a crush on Chris. She explains that when she bumped into him today, she noticed she was excited to see him and actually had butterflies while they talked and felt the mood be uplifted for the rest of the day. She thought about it and came to the conclusion that she had a crush on him and decided she should talk to me about it. She tells me it's the first time she's felt like this since we started dating and before me, there was only one other person that caused this in her. Basically, Chris's child. I responded by thanking her for her honesty and happy she told me as it makes me feel like she cares about how I might feel about it. I went uh, into a bit of a rant explaining that it's natural to have crushes and as long as she isn't acting on them or crossing boundaries then it'll be fine and the crush will sizzle out, basically no harm, no foul. She's asked me how best to handle the situation and she, just, uh, and, and she suggested to cut off all contact and avoid him. I responded by telling her that that may be an overreaction and she shouldn't avoid him, just respect boundaries and at this point not accept any invitations to go out and do things as that could lead to trouble. Is there anything else I should be saying or asking about? Did I handle it correctly? If this crush doesn't fizzle out, what steps should I take to resolve it? Basically asking for any advice and comments on how best to handle the situation. If she admits to you that she has a crush, it means that she doesn't respect you. That's that's it. So you might, again, this might be the end of the marriage, sadly. She should have only feelings for you. Again, top comment. Honest communication, reasonable response, not a lot uh, of those in this sub, good on you. No. This is a wrong response. Again, people say you handled that extremely well. No, she should cut the guy off. But again, her telling you that she has a crush on another man is like hugely disrespectful, right? It says, I'm marrying you, but I'm already thinking about other guys. It's it's absurd. It's terrible. This, this is probably an end to the relationship, frankly. Gigantic red flag. All right, we'll end the, vi uh, we'll end the video there. Hit that sub, hit all for notifications, go to my Patreon and subscribe, patreon.com slash the Helios blog, drop me a donation, just like Hunter M, Adrian R, and Tom M, shout to them, link is in the description, just click on the more, which is under the video, buy my books at bit.ly slash Helios books, or you can click on the uh, link in the description again, it's under more. Thank you for watching the video to the end, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.